Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog, and today I was talking to um, someone online who had commented on one of the videos, and he was trying to um, hack into his car's key fob. So, car keys, uh, whenever you press the button, you can remotely unlock your car. And he was trying to see if there was a way of um, hacking into that and getting uh, getting the ability to unlock a car um, without actually using the key fob. Now, it's an interesting concept because um, key fob technology is obviously advanced to the point to try and make it difficult to do, but it's still very much possible. And um, I was talking with him back and forward and I thought, you know what, I'll do, I'll do a video on the, the theory of it. I'm also going to do a video later on the uh, practicalities of it, of using GNU Radio, which is a bit of software that you can use for software-defined radios and, and other such things. Um, but I just need to think of a way of doing it because I don't have a Hack RF1, which is a device that's sort of specifically made to do um, attacks like this. They are about 200 beer tokens. You can get them for a bit less. I, and I just don't have the money to get one, so um, I need to find a workaround for that. But at the very least, I'm going to do the GNU Radio software side of things and let you see how you can actually set that up to do these attacks. Uh, but in this video, I thought I'd do the, the theory behind it. So your car key has a thing called a rolling code. And this is to stop um, what's called a, a, a basic replay attack. And a replay attack is sort of as it sounds, you capture the signal, you save it, and then you replay it later on. Because the code changes, it's uh, more difficult to do that. So for example, whenever you first get your car, it might be 001. And on the key, it goes, okay, my next signal, I need to send is 001. So you press the key, it does that one, and done. It then moves on to two, then three, then four, then five, and works its way down. Now, the way that you can get around this is by interrupting that signal. So if I put something in the middle here, that blocked the signal from the key fob saying, okay, I need to send 001 that sends that to the car and the car doesn't receive it. The car still thinks it's on 001. And if I've captured that signal as well, I then have a code that the car hasn't seen yet. And then I can use that to unlock the car. Now, the way that the car listens for things is how you actually do this. Because if you think about it, if you've jammed that signal, the person's gonna hit the key again, aren't they? To try and unlock their car. So in order to be um, undiscovered, to be as discreet as possible, you need to also have a way of letting them unlock the car, but still keeping the code that you need. So the way that the car listens for signals is um, using quite a wide bandwidth. And I need to briefly talk about bandwidth. It's not the same as what you might think for um, your internet speeds. If you think of bandwidth, you think, oh, I've got X megabyte speeds. It's not quite the same. Bandwidth is essentially the width of the frequency that it's listening on. So down here, um, just as an example, I've got this zero hertz to 100 kilohertz. And what it'll do is a band or a wide bandwidth would go from, let's say we'll go uh, here, which we'll say is one kilohertz. And say it goes to, uh, let's say five kilohertz. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's, that's not, that quite, not that wide in radio terms. But for um, the purposes of this, I mean, that's, uh, that's what, like 5,000 hertz space. And that's, that's, that is bandwidth. It's how wide that signal is. Now, the reason that a car has to have quite a wide listen window, um, so we'll keep with the one to five here. The reason it needs to be quite wide is uh, because your car keys, your key fobs, might not um, transmit on the same frequency. Now they will um, transmit on the same frequency that whenever you get it and you press the button and it transmits on a set frequency, it's going to transmit on that frequency for a foreseeable amount of time. Components can degrade in the key fob and that can cause a bit of frequency drift. 
and there are also uh, manufacturing defects and um, variations. So if the company that makes the key fobs makes five key fobs, they might all transmit on slightly different frequencies. They might be slightly off from the frequency um, that, that they intend. So in order to get around that, they have quite a wide listen window. And uh, it's a fairly common thing for receivers. They, they listen on a bit of a broader um, uh, spectrum than just the specific frequency. And it's, it's this um, large bandwidth, again, that, that gives us the ability to do these attacks. Because in radio, as a rule of thumb, the strongest signal wins. And, and that's it. The strongest signal will win. And that's how jammers um, work. So if you have your signal, so we'll say that this is your car key signal. Here. Hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, also we'll say that this um, is amplitude. Uh, amplitude over time. That's the wrong unit of measurement, but it'll be fine. So this is how strong the signal is. Higher it up it is, stronger the signal. And you have a jamming device. And what you do in that bandwidth is you just, you just blast out a good bit of RF. Now, you're doing it in the receive window of the car, so the car has to look at that large signal. It sees it, and it has to make sure that it is not the signal that it wants. Now, by the time it's finished looking for this, looking at this signal and determining, okay, no, that isn't, that isn't a code to unlock the car, I can ignore it. By the time it works that out, this signal that you've sent from your uh, key fob is gone. Just, uh, radio waves, they travel at the speed of light, it's very quick. Um, in order to, to do this quickly, you would need to use something like an FPGA, which is a field programmable gate array, which is, I'll maybe talk about them in another video, they're very fun. Um, so it's not quick enough to, to check the two signals at the same time, or quickly enough before they disappear. And that's all well and good. So what you've done there is effectively you've stopped the signal from going through. But how do you get that signal? How do you actually get the code? And that is again down to bandwidth. So there's quite a large jamming signal here. And that's, that's blotting out the car's um, receiver. But if you have a receiver and you set it to a very narrow bandwidth, so say you look on um, SDR software, so software defined radio that you can um, look at the spectrum, and you can see that signal coming in, and you know, okay, that, that signal is happening at bang on four kilohertz, and it's only a couple of megahertz wide. Sounds confusing, but bear with me. So you know it's happening at, right, at exactly that frequency. So if you set a very, very narrow bandwidth on your receiver, you can then capture that signal because your receiver doesn't care whether there's a jamming signal there. Doesn't, doesn't matter, it's not even gonna look at it. And as such, it can then capture that signal almost perfectly. Now, if you have too strong of a jamming signal, so if you just blast out, you know, 100 watts of power, which is way overkill for, for jamming um, a key fob signal, there will be bleed over because it will start, it will drift out as well. So um, as, a good practice in radios in general is always to use as little power as you need to get the job done. And in this case, it's essential that you do that because if you don't, um, you're going to interrupt that signal and then you're going to need to um, take that signal and tidy it up somehow and try and remove the jamming signal. And this brings me on to another point about radios, which is very key. You don't need to understand the signal to attack it. And that is a massive point of um, security with radio communications. People seem to think that they, if they encrypt it, if they modulate it, if they do all this stuff to the signal, then it's fine. If someone lifts it, they can't read it. But you don't need to read it. You just need to have it. And you have this signal, and you know, okay, this signal is going to unlock the car the next time. So you save that to a file or something, and you go, okay, this is going to unlock this car. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know what the code is inside there. You don't need to know how it's been encrypted. Doesn't matter. You've got the signal. And that is, I cannot stress that enough. That is a very key point. Now, how do you unlock the car so that the user, or the, the victim in this case, doesn't know that their signal's been interrupted? Well, whenever you press your key fob 
and your car doesn't lock first time, what do you do? You, you press it again and again and again until it unlocks or you get close enough that you just unlock it the, with the key. What you do is you have it programmed in GNU Radio or um, there is a device called a Roll Jam which essentially does this and it's uh, made from an Arduino so it's programmed in C. And what it does is whenever it receives the first signal, it keeps it for a second. Then if it receives another signal, it transmits the first signal it got. So say we captured, uh, I'll change my color. So we captured 001. The person hits the key fob again. What we do is we transmit that to the car and we keep the other signal that was sent through. So whenever they press the key fob again, the key fob thinks it's already used 001, so it moves on to 002. You keep 002 and you transmit 001 to the car. Car unlocks, the person's none the wiser and you still have a code that is valid and will work to unlock the car. And it, it'll, it'll just keep doing this. So if uh, say they get home and they press the button again to lock the car, it'll move on to the next code. You keep 003 and you transmit 002 to the car. I did that arrow the wrong way around, apologies. And it'll keep doing that. And so you, um, generally speaking with this sort of device, you'd probably, you would want to keep it under the car in some way, shape or form or, or in and around the car. So that whenever you come up to it, you can just lift the device out of um, wherever you've stashed it, hit the button and the car unlocks. And that's it. That is how easy it is um, to hack these devices. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you do, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to be doing actually a series on RF hacking and on concepts like this. So uh, if you want to see more of them, please um, hit the like button and I'll churn them out as quickly as I can. Um, so yeah, I'll see you later.